Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable week. I hope that you have achieved at least some of the things that you set out to do this week. And no matter where you're at, as I always say, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. So don't give up uh, because you had a rough week. Don't give up because you had a rough month. Don't give up because you feel you haven't gotten to a point that you believe you should be. Focus on the destination, put in the work and trust the universal law of reciprocity, the universal law of sowing and reaping. What you put out does re return to you. You have to be patient and you have to be consistent. Never, ever, ever give up. It's not about your resources at the end of the day. It's not about what you know at the end of the day. It's not about who you know at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it is about your willingness to finish what you started. And so on that note, I just want to uh, encourage you to stand up, step out, and move forward. Now, I'm going to be real brief on this Friday uh, installment. I get a lot of people who come to me. Uh, they hear about the programs that I offer. They hear about different things I've done uh, in working with different people. And the thing they think we want to talk about is... Hello, Miss Peoples. The thing they want to talk about is uh, they need motivation. They need to be inspired. They need to know uh, what I can tell you is most people have motivation. Your motivation is the motive why you're doing something. Your motive is I don't want to be uh, impoverished the rest of my life. I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck the rest of the rest of my life. I don't want a mediocre marriage. I, whatever it is you're working to change in your life for the better. There's a motive already behind it. You've motivated. The problem is most people don't have the discipline. See, it requires discipline. No matter who you are, no matter who you know, no matter how many connections you make, you're not going to get around the uh, the demand and the need for self-discipline. You're going to have to execute discipline through your lives, or even when you experience success, it will be ultimately and quickly interrupt it because you won't have the discipline to stay the course. You won't have the discipline to push. Discipline is a requirement. Why? Because the things that it takes to achieve exceptional, extraordinary, phenomenal doesn't come by doing what everybody else does. It doesn't come by meandering through the maze of mediocrity. It doesn't come by meeting the measurement standards of what is average. That's why I tell people all the time, school trains you to fail. Why? Because school tells you if you just get a 70, you passed, you're successful. No, 70% won't get it in the world. 70% will not produce greatness. 70% 70, 70 will put you in the lower percentile of what's average and mediocre. 75 and 80% will put you right around the mid midpoint of what's average and mediocre. You've got to get up in the 95 percentile before you start experiencing greatness. And that doesn't happen by sitting around and doing what everyone else does. If everybody else is getting up at 7.30 and 8, you better be getting up at 5 and 6. It's that simple. You've got to put in the work and you've got to be disciplined and consistent with the work you put in. It's not motivation you need. You've got motive. You got those kids that you're doing it for. You got that wife or that husband you're doing it for. You've got your family that have put so much trust and in, in investment into you being a success that you're doing it for. You've got that inner yearning inside of you that says there's something better in life than what you've experienced that you're doing it for. It's not motive or motivation. It's the fact that until this point you have and carried out, executed, and embraced self-discipline as a principle necessary to achieve the things you want to do. I have done the things I've done in this life because I refuse to quit. I get up every morning, and while I'm looking for uh, uh, evidence of the things I've done to return to me and show my work is validated by the results. They don't always come when I want them to. They don't always come at a time frame or within the time frame I think they should. But I am consistently pushing because time has shown me when I remain steadfast on the course, when I refuse to give up, when I stop 
blaming, when I stop focusing on what's not right, when I stop focusing on what's going wrong and I fix my mind on what I control, what I can do and what I control is I can get up and I can put the work in. What I control is I don't have to wallow in the bed to 7.45, 8.45, 9.45, 10 o'clock while the people that are in the market that I'm trying to get a piece of are already up and moving. I can't win that way. It's not a competition personally, but I have to understand if I want a piece of this market, I've got to be heavily invested in providing this market with things they can't get anywhere else. And I can't be resting on my laurels while doing it. Self-discipline has to drive you to put in the work. That's the problem. I see, I see it with students. I see it with uh, employees. I even see it with business owners. There's no self-discipline. You want the world to correct and move and operate for you without you putting in the work and being committed to stay the course. It's about staying the course. It's about finishing what you started, about putting in enough work to, uh, enough work to produce a quality product it's about trusting the process so that even when you don't see it, because see, let me explain something to you. A lot of people have trained themselves to quit. I'm going to try it, but if I don't see results, I got to move on because I don't have, to. you've got time. The time you're going to waste jumping from opportunity to opportunity and never finishing is going to leave you in a place where you will guaranteed to be passed if you just stay the course with one thing. Finish what you start, put in the work, trust the process. What you sow, you reap. There's a harvest coming for the work you put in, but you cannot expect a harvest if you haven't planted. You cannot expect a harvest if you haven't watered and cultivated. You cannot expect a harvest if you haven't guarded the vision, if you haven't guarded the dream, if you haven't sit down and put in the work and pressed, if you haven't filled your mind with the right thoughts and that you're pressing through, that you're disciplined in your thinking, you're disciplined in your planning, you're disciplined in your execution. You cannot expect to uh, achieve the results of something exceptional, extraordinary, or phenomenal while behaving average. You want something that most people don't have. You have to be willing to do something most people don't do. You can't do what everybody else does and have something that they don't have. You've got to step outside of the circle of average and mediocrity and move into an expectation where you are being held accountable by yourself and by others to do what it is you said you were going to do and you don't move off your circle until you get it done. There are all different types of reasons why you can't do something. They call excuses. You can come up with any number of them anytime. That's not where the win is. The win is finding the one reason why you can, the one reason why you should, the one reason that you will not fail and hanging your hat on it and nailing it to the wall and then pushing through relentlessly. I tell people all the time, if you follow me for any stretch of time, you know this. At the core of everything I am is one principle. Be relentless. Be relentless. It's not how much knowledge I have. I've acquired a lot. It's not how much experience I have. I've developed and built and, 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 and a lot. It's not any of that. It's about sitting up and said, Miss People, that's because Dr. Miles, Ramo, Miles Monroe had a massive impact on my development. The few times I've got to meet him, but I studied him uh, tremendously. Uh, so, yeah, he had a major impact. Uh, unbelievable. Just totally remarkable. So that's definitely uh, a compliment as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Um, look. You've got to actually trust the process at a level that doesn't make sense. Because, see, greatness isn't a rational reality. Greatness is not a rational reality. Greatness requires an irrational state of mind. Greatness has 
a, a demand that you think in a place where most people will think you're not being what? Realistic. Why? Because greatness takes you in a place where most people are not executing. Most people are not operating. And so when you sit up, when you sit up and you look at it and you're and you're staring it down. Uh, I was telling a client this morning that one of my top three quotes of all time is by Stephen Furtick. And it says that if the vision that you have for your life isn't so huge that it's intimidating you, there's a good chance that it's insulting God. Why? Because God didn't design you for mediocrity. God didn't design you to play it safe. God didn't design you to float around among the, amongst the confines and restrictions of average. God designed you to be a representation of your design, which is exceptional, extraordinary, phenomenal. God doesn't design average. Average is a default for not activating your potential. Average is what happens when you refuse to reach inside of you and pull out that gift and put that gift to work at a way and a level and intensity that you touch the world. You were meant to touch the world, to be a representation of your designer. And if you're not living life at that level, it's probably insulting God. If you don't have a vision that shakes you when you wake up in the morning because you know it's so huge that if you don't give it your best shot today, you're going to be behind the eight ball. I wake up every day with a, with a vision of what my life is supposed to be and what I've got to put in the day just to stay on course. I'm not, I, I'm not so much intimidated as I am held accountable by it, but it makes me wake up with a sense of urgency. I don't have time to play. I don't have to, and I don't mean I don't have time to spend with my family and enjoy life. I don't have time for empty time. Everything in my, every day, every point in my day is dedicated to something. Some of it is dedicated to being in the office. Some of it is dedicated to being with clients. Some of it is dedicated to community work. Some of it is dedicated to my children. Some of it is dedicated to my wife, but it's all dedicated to something because that 86,400 seconds that I have in a day will never return to me once it's gone. I either used it or I wasted it. And that's how I live my life. I live my life on full. So that when I leave this world, I die on E having given the world everything that I have. That's the challenge that I'm giving you. I'm challenging you. Uh, hello, uh, I hope I don't, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna mess this up. Jamile in Jamile, uh, Natton, thanks for dropping in from the UK. Uh, I'm glad to see that we're reaching people uh in in other geographical locations which has always been my goal and i've picked up clients uh from the uk uh in in other parts of europe also australia south africa a couple of other places and it's been fantastic being able to do that using the tools and technological advancements we have at our disposal uh, i love working with people one-on-one -on -one. and again for those of you who may be interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one, the information will be in the description box on whatever platform you're watching this stream on because I'm streaming on multiple platforms. Look, let me leave you with this. There has to be an idea of what it is you're pursuing. It has to be clear. It has to be so clear that it literally is the life breath of what you're doing. You've got to want it so bad that it's literally like breathing. If you don't have it, you, you can't breathe. You got to want it that bad. You got to want it at a deep level because why? If you don't want it so bad, like, uh, like, 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 uh, Eric Thomas says, you've got to want it. So you got to want it as bad as you want to breathe. Why? Because if you don't want it as bad as you want air, you're going to run into a difficult moment and that difficult moment will cause you to shut down. If you don't want it as bad as you want to live this life, then there'll come some point, some time, some difficult moment, some obstacle, some setback that'll make you say, man, it ain't worth it. And you'll give up. You just gotta, your why has got to be so big that you can't shake free of it. 
Then when you get that, you write it down. You plant it in your spirit. You plant it in your psyche. You put it on vision boards. You put it in your journal. You put it in your tablet. I write it on cards and I put it in my wallet. So every time I put out a credit card to pay for something, it's sitting right there telling me what my goals are, what my dreams are, what my motivation is behind it, and that I will complete it and I will finish it. And that's what I work on every day. It's not easy. There are things I set out to do a couple of years ago that I haven't got done yet, but I'm on it and I see it closing in. What if I would have given up after the first six? Six months of it not happening. I'll be on some other thing trying to start over and then start over and then start over and I never finish. That's not how you do it. You anchor yourself in your purpose. You anchor yourself in your vision and you walk it out. The distance you're willing to go is the determining factor in what you achieve. On that note, I'm getting out of here. Look, Thanks for stopping in. If you know somebody that can benefit it, benefit from the content that I'm sharing, give it to them, share it with them. And uh, I thank you for the love you show. If you want to work with me, go to that description box, uh, click the link on the program you think fits you, and let's make something happen in this world. On that note, I'm out of here. As I always say, I live my life on full so that I will die on E. I, ch uh, I, ch I challenge you to do the same thing. On that note, I'm out. Peace. Dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.